This is AndyTube and in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, remove and reinstall the needle thread take up lever system. This is on my Singer 403A. Um, this process is the same on many Singer models, uh, all of the Slantomatics and many uh, other classes, uh, 300s, the 400s, so forth. The same kind of principle here. Let me get this a little closer here. And there. So, um, the take the take up lever system. Uh, this is a hinge um, stud, and it is anchored in the body and the stud stays stationary in there but but the uh, take up system here just hinges on it this is the other anchor this is another hinge stud and it goes through the connecting link that heads towards the needle bar to make it go up and down and it goes through uh, the take-up lever and it ends up anchored in this uh, kind of black half moon thing. It's called the needle bar crank. Also can be called the needle bar mm, counter balance. Yeah. So that silver circle you see that's the end of the uh, horizontal arm shaft and and this uh, is held to the shaft with a set screw big one but also in there is uh, this mm, other hinge stud and it's held in place also by a set screw. Okay, so uh, to get this out, up on the top there's some access to the two set screws that hold this system in place. And if you're looking at this and saying, well I don't, I don't see that on my machine, it's because I have the needle bar out and I have the, the needle bar vibrating bracket out. And the pressure thumb screw for the presser bar is out. So if you don't know how to do that uh, in the description below the video and in the 20 second slide I'm allowed to put at the end of the video I'll put a link to the playlist for Regina Singer Model 403 and in that playlist you'll find all the videos for this machine including the needle bar and the presser bar and the vibrating bracket and so forth okay so I'm gonna see if I can tilt this to show you these access ports yeah so this is the what I call the anchor hinge stud there's a set screw in there for that and this is the access port that goes down and you can go down inside and there's a set screw on that needle bar crank that holds the other hinge stud in place and this hole is just for the arm cover screw so when you see me working on top and I say, hey, you're going to loosen these or take these out, that's what I'm talking about. That's where, what it looks like up there. Okay. All right. So um, to get started, I'm going to... Uh, remove the set screw and I take these set screws out because every one of these I've done 
the the studs are just like stuck in there they're like glued in there with all the old dried oil and and uh, I usually have to use a penetrating oil you know to get them loose enough to pull to to pull these out and they have to be pulled out together because of all this linkage you know it's not like you can pull one out and then the other so you have to kind of wiggle them out together and uh, so anyway I take the set screws out and I and I put some um, penetrating oil in there to, to, to try and get them like loosened up you know to, to get them out so I'm gonna stand up over the machine here and I guess up at the top of the screen you, you should be able to see me uh, oh boy, go in and uh, work on this set screw up above here and uh, I'm gonna just take it out then to get to this one I, I on the other side I told you I have to go through the top but this has to be in this position this linkage and everything has to be in this position so I can access that screw up through the top so if it's like that or any place else you're not going to be able to you know uh, peek down in here and see that set screw and get a screwdriver on it and uh, all of my fancy newer screwdriver sets uh, won't go in there they, they don't they don't fit down in there so I have a long uh, skinny cabinet screwdriver from my old Bell system days and I can go down in there and get that into the set screw now if you push down on on it to when you turn it here's what's going to happen just like that it's going to slip right out and move the crank so once you get your screw in there, uh, screwdriver in there, you've got to hold everything steady, either holding on to the hand wheel uh, real tight so that when you push on the screwdriver, like push down and turn left, it, it doesn't make everything move. Now I usually just hold it up in here like this. To, to try and keep it in place but you can use the hand wheel also okay so and don't be surprised if you can't even turn uh, turn these set screws at first you know if you're worried about stripping them let them soak in some penetrating oil uh, you can take this set screw out with the regular screwdriver and uh, it'll probably just fall down to the bottom of the nose area here where you can retrieve it. Um, since I have these spring screwdrivers, I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and use it to take out that set screw. Oh it worked. I can't I can't see the screen on the back of the camera now because I'm standing up but I hope you can see that set screw okay okay so yay so I've got the two set screws out and uh, honestly the next thing that I do is I, I take some penetrating oil you can use whatever you want if you don't have penetrating oil you could probably use alcohol it's just not as effective and I'm going to go into those uh, two holes where I took out the set screws. And I'm just going to go in there and give it a shot of penetrating oil. And then, uh, do you see this, this little cut? I'm going to sit back down now so I can see the screen. Okay, so you see this um, cut?
cut or, or slice right here in the front of this hinge stud. That's to help you line up the hinge stud to the set screw because there's a flat spot on this and uh, believe me when we put it back we want to get it perfect we don't want to forget that like I did with the 327k and tighten it someplace else not on the flat spot which messes up the the timing like of the take up lever to the hook and needle bar but what what I like about it being there <laughs> is that uh, I can put a, a small screwdriver tip in there and I can uh, like turn it start wiggling it back and forth and and when you do this you're probably going to feel that it's real gummy you know it's real sticky but you're not hurting anything if you have that set screw out you're just trying to get everything loosened up okay all right now also I thought I'd mention you see this this is a very thin headed uh, screw and I think it's righty loosey and I can see somebody's uh, damaged it here maybe somebody tried to turn it left to loosen it thinking that's how you got this off And, and you, you can, I have in the past, turned this to the right and taken it off and pulled this off. But I I've, I've, I've myself find it better to take out that set screw up on the top and pull just pull it with the whole stud because I'm much less likely to damage that than to damage this screw. So w once once you get it moving you see, so oh I guess I was gonna say I've never actually done this but I guess I was gonna say that you could maybe turn this the same way to try and twist it and, and whoops I need a different screw and, and twist it and get it turning the same way I did the other one see so if it's, if it's stuck in there, you can like turn it halfway and you can spray some more penetrating oil. And that's what I did with this one. Is I, I finally got it moving a little bit and I just kept at it and I got it around like on the other side. Which, which you can do because you have the set screw out. And then I went down in there and sprayed some more penetrating oil and just came back came back later and and that really helped break it up sooner so I got everything kind of turning loose here right okay now I'm just gonna go in and, and pull this whole system out but like I said you have to kind of do it together see if I come here and pull one side it'll come out a little tiny bit but because of all this it, it, it's just not going to do it so uh, you know I go in here and say okay this is starting to free up I can go to this one say okay it's starting to free up and maybe I'll grab this crossbar over on the left side and grab my needle nose and just try and wiggle them in and out together until I feel like I can because really if you get if you get one ahead of the other it just kind of freezes up <laughs> so they really have to kind of be in in sequence there there we go kind of done together Let's see if I can I give you some better pictures of this now let's see I'm done with this for the moment so so here you see the, the hinge stud, right? And it's got this recessed area for the set screw you put in from the top. And uh, 
it allows you know all the linkage just to hinge on it here's the hinge stud uh, that goes into the needle bar crank and it has a big old flat spot and you can see it's dirty but you can see a like a, a spot in the center that's shinier and that's where the set screw has been sitting okay and there's the front of it so that that's why when we go to put it back on it, whoop, it's going to be sitting like this and we're going to turn this to about three o'clock that that mark or that cut or slice we're going to turn it to about three o'clock because what that does is is put the you know, turn around this way that puts the flat spot up okay and you heard heard and saw something fall off here right that was the connecting link and it goes on the back here and uh, assembles like that so when we put this in it comes out for the connecting link that clamps the needle bar in place right remember that okay so there's a there's a pretty good look at that and then uh, let's see if I can get this up here a little bit and get the right light on it good yeah so this is the hole for the hinge stud the ank what I call the anchor hinge stud okay and then here is the hole in the needle bar crank And uh, now that that's open a little bit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my pointer down through the access port in the top and down in through the hole for the set screw so you can see how you have to access that. Okay, and I can do the, the same over here, I guess, but, but this one is easy to see right from the top. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take these apart a little bit and clean them. I can clean them with the crud cutter you know and scrub them with a brush. These, this is a good candidate for an ultrasonic cleaning too because of because of the you know hollow spaces inside. What you're going to notice when this when this sits like that oh I should have said um, you can you can put um, penetrating oil here in the front I forgot to tell you that when you're trying to loose it up get a big old squirt in there because look here on the bottom of it whoops where is it there or to the side of it I guess there there's a oil port so when you oil this you, you put a little oil in there and you can go like that and you'll see that there is it's going to show up here at all you can see that there is an oil port in the connecting link too right whoa okay i guess you saw enough of that one so uh, this one will not come apart you can see the little oil places for it Um, unless you um, put the screwdriver on it and turn it to the right and uh, like I said I don't I don't really I don't do that uh, anymore because it, it, it can tend to be very hard and it can tend to the head of that screw is just so thin that it's just not uh, worth it to me anymore I so, think since I have an ultrasonic cleaner I'm gonna throw it in there for 10 or 20 minutes and 
then I use a steel brush if I got to get anything else off. Okay, when it cleaned up, we'll come back and I'll show you how easy it is to, to put this in. And I'll show you the proper way so you don't mess up like I did on that 327. Time to put it all back together now. And I'm going to start by just getting the uh, set screws started into their uh, places here so I don't I don't have to do that when the other parts I'm trying to hold together I can see this pretty good up here so the thing is don't put the set screw in far enough to block the stud when we're when we're trying to put the stud back in we don't want to block the little tube that it goes into so just just enough to get it in there and uh, they I did use the ultrasonic cleaner to clean these uh, parts and they came out very nice of course and I, I did have to scrub one little area around the front of that uh, hinge stud because it just had years and years of black oil there. So I just took a little uh, metal brush to that real quick and it came off. And then I put some oil on the parts and in the little oil ports uh, for that. So to to uh, uh, assemble this part, this uh, extension link kind of confuses people sometimes about how it goes. But the, the larger piece goes on the bottom. And if you see up here, there's kind of a smaller circumference and a bigger circumference. So you, you have to find the one that fits through the circle of the take-up lever there. And then this part has to sit flush down inside. There's a recessed area in here and uh, for the needle bar crank and it has to go in there. Okay. So we're, we're, whoops, we're kind of looking like this. Oops, I had it there for a minute. Okay. <laughs> Maybe if I put the, the hinge stud in there, it'll quit doing that. <laughs> Let's try that. How's that? That's a little better. That's an idea, huh? So the way that we took these two... Uh, pulled these two studs out at the same time we have to put them back in that way and and to help um, getting them to to like glide in or slide in a little bit easier uh, you can uh, spread a drop or two of oil on them or put oil in into the holes for them and let's see if I can get them up here see if I can barely get the anchor stud in place and then try and move the linkage stud into place there there. It really helps a lot to put a little oil on there. Okay. Now, this is the part you can't you can't forget. Is this um, little slot right there? Uh, with this turned at like a ninety degree here, that little slot has to be at three o'clock. 
because that is what's going to put the flat spot on it up. And that is going to allow me to tighten the set screw on the flat spot. So that's kind of like setting the timing between the needle and the hook. If you get the flat spot up on this when you tighten the set screw, that's like timing the take up lever to the hook and the needle. And then I'm just going to go in here and start putting that, tightening up that set screw. Now this I want to push back with my thumb and uh, tighten it first. Matter of fact, I gotta stand up and look down in there a little bit to do it. It's a little dark in there now that you get that take up lever. So let me get it almost tight. There we go. And then I will make sure it's pushed all the way into the crank and tighten it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Now this other one. Let's see, can I raise this up here a little bit? Let's see. Let's see how we're looking. The other um, set screw. I want to. Uh, you know, push push this in. Of course, get get it in there. But I want to s not hold it in, but s slowly tighten the set screw while I turn the hand wheel. And that movement is going to kind of do a self centering on that stud, so there will not be binding. If I pushed it in as hard as I could, or if I left it sticking out a little tiny bit and just tightened it, it can really create a binding with these parts. So, I'm going to go up top. I'm going to back up my set screw I put in just a little to be sure that I have this up flush against the casting and then get my set screw about a good turn back. I'm going to start just turning the hand wheel. If you have the motor in your machine and it will run, you could even run the motor to do this. But just slowly tighten the set screw while, while it's in motion, while everything is in motion there. And that set screw, if you remember the picture, it's in, it's in a little bit deeper than you think. Okay, nice and tight. Now this this will hang up in here because it's not connected to the needle bar right now, you know, so it can it can get caught. Don't let that worry you. But you can test it now for uh, binding. You can feel it for loo looseness and it doesn't rattle or anything like that. So it's good. But you want to make sure that it turns all the way around uh, very freely because I'll show you the spot this is usually right in this area is usually where you'll feel some binding and it feels good so there you go how to remove and install and adjust in a way that that uh, set screw here the needle thread take up lever on a Singer Model 403A. 
and many other models. Now if you ever have a machine that you feel when you're turning it by hand and it feels something is binding, this is one of the places that Singer recommends you test. Of course you'd want to be sure it was oiled and everything was good and you'd want to be sure that when it was in this position right here that that little hash mark or cut or slot was at three o'clock so that you know your your set screws on the flat spot and then you can loosen the set screw of the anchor hinge stud loosen it make sure it's not wobbly loose and then tighten that as I did while you're turning it and that can correct any binding or or slack and rattling in here <clears throat> thanks for tuning in for for this uh, video about the take up lever and uh, I'm just going to continue on as I mentioned earlier if you didn't watch the whole video um, uh, in the description below and at the end of the video here I'm going to put a link to the playlist for the machine and you can go there and you can find the needle bar video and the presser bar video and the vibrating bracket video so if you ever need to work in here on this stuff you know how to get to this point okay other than that, I hope you can come back and, and uh, watch videos on my channel again in the future. In the meantime, take care of yourself.